Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and we're back here with Sim Airport, trying to recreate the wonder that is Bristol Airport here in the UK. And you can see in the clock here at the very top, it is just past three o'clock in the morning, very early in the day, and we have passengers arriving and their first flight doesn't actually land until six. I mean, what are these people thinking? Maybe they were scared that the bus service to the airport was a bit ropey and unreliable. So they thought they'd catch the earliest bus possible. Yeah, to be honest, I know how Bristol public transport works. That's quite a reasonable assumption, to be honest. Uh, they, I have no staff in the terminal at the moment, so they're just going to have to find their way around and um, feed themselves from the vending machines, which are already doing quite good business, actually. Yep, uh, I do actually put some retail staff in a little bit before the ticket and the security people turn up, uh, just so I can sell these early passengers some, uh, well, some stuff, basically. Right, what are we doing today? What I want to do today is attempt to make the airport more profitable, and expand the number of flights that we have running from here, and move into one of the wonderful features of the game which turned up late-ish last year during the early access period of Sim Airport, and that's remote gates. Yes, should be fun. Now, while we're here, I just want to sort of show you this photograph. Hopefully I'll put a photograph up here while I'm editing this recording, which shows you the layout of the real Bristol Airport. And as you can see, it's a very long, thin building. Uh, this is kind of the north, I'm going to call it the north end of it, of the main terminal. And we have three gates here attached to the terminal building itself. We then, then have up here two stands facing another two stands. So there's four stands here at this, uh, this end of the terminal. Then actually up here further, there are another six plane stands. Uh, so that's three, again, facing three. So we're going to need to expand to at least that one extra piece of land, possibly even above that. And then, down south here, there's at least another three, probably four gates um, for, for the aeroplanes as well. So there's a, a vast amount of expansion still to do. OK, now, I was looking at... Let me just pause this for a second so it doesn't get too carried away. Uh, I was looking at putting in this remote gate up here, a large gate, so I can get some large aircraft in with large numbers of passengers. And I was looking at the, uh, the, the, the infrastructure that supports the remote gate, the main thing of which is the vehicle hangar, because you need buses, obviously, to get passengers out to these remote stands. Uh, and if I look here, it's under Objects, Structures, yep, we have a medium hangar, which is the one I used most often in the previous series of this game. Uh, and that cost me uh, nearly th over over $30,000 and holds three vehicles. So basically a bus, a fuel tanker and a baggage cart, for example, any one of those three, any combination of them. We could go for a large hangar, nearly 53000 and that holds five vehicles. So it's more cost effective, but that's a, it's very large, and B, it's very expensive. Then I noticed one of the mods I have installed in this game, and a reminder, if you want to check out the mods I'm using, there's a link to my collection on, this, on Steam uh, in the description below. One of those mods is an underground vehicle depot, which costs four and a half thousand. Very nice indeed, and can hold up to ten vehicles. I mean, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? And that's the one I'm going to use. Now, I'm going to have to admit something to you at this point um, and make a conf bit of a confession. This is the second attempt I've made at recording this episode. The first attempt, I, I finished the video, but I didn't actually manage to do what I wanted to do. I, I got some things horribly, horribly wrong and eventually had to give up and admit defeat. I just couldn't get the remote gate to work. I spent a little bit of time looking at what was going on and I think I've sussed out what the problem was. The issue was, is I'm actually needing to run roads underground to get to this underground vehicle depot, obviously. Um, and I'd not actually run roads underground before and I just didn't quite get how they worked. 
I think I've got it got it understood now. So <laughs> keep your fingers crossed that this works. Okay, now the underground vehicle depot it can actually be placed on the ground level uh, here, but it does need to be within a building area. So it needs to be within walls. Uh, now the space we've got isn't great for this because there's all sorts of other infrastructure we want to put on here as well. Oh, and the other thing you'll notice if looking back at that photo of uh, Bristol Airport is around about here in in this sort of area here where this sort of blue is in this space here appears to be all the sort of supporting um, infrastructure, the supporting facilities for the airport, the fuel tanks and stuff like that. So I'm thinking this will be where the sort of the vehicle depot is, the fuel tanks when I get to do fuel and so on will go in here as well. Uh, it's a bit close to the terminal, but I'm sure the safety measures are all there and, and strictly enforced and perfectly good. <laughs> so, um, so what I'm thinking of doing is actually putting the vehicle depot here underneath the terminal, which is sort of stretching out a bit here so we can run some road into it uh, from there. Now, what I need to do is set this plan down onto the lower level planning. There you go. Uh, we'll put it in cyan. Why not? Uh, just mark it out there. Just use my page down key. And there you are. Drop it there. And there, that's where I know where my building needs to, to be done. Now, what we'll do, we need to build foundation down here. And this is where we will put that vehicle depot in there. So let's get the game running on a pace. No, don't do that. Let's go up instead. Um, I th yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Uh, yeah, the other thing I've done uh, while while we're waiting for that to finish building is I've actually reduced the number of workers I'm using uh, from 25 to 20. Uh, it cost me 10 grand to fire them, but the running cost, the daily cost of these, these people, uh, I, I'm saving money, I think, overall. And I also, while the uh, airport was closed for the evening, I've actually built some toilets here in the exit area for the in the baggage claim area what i'd noticed after the last recording was that some passengers were arriving uh, on their airplanes going through here and then walking all the way up here to use the toilets <laughs> before collecting their baggage or going to pick up uh, so i thought although it's not going to make me any money uh, I'll, I'll do the human thing i'll be a bit of a humanitarian and provide uh, my arriving passengers with some convenient conveniences, if you will. Again, they're not furnished, they're not, there's no floor or anything, so it's not terribly attractive, uh, but uh, that will do. Okay, they've nearly finished here. Let's get rid of the planning so I can just make sure they have finished. Okay, that's good. Okay, now the underground depot structures, there we go, will fit very nicely in there so we as it says there we need it to be facing a taxiway or roadway so we need some road along here uh, and that's road here uh, which way should we have it going we'll have it going in this direction we don't need road all along here we just need road along the sort of the entrance to the depot which i think is about there now, <laughs> this shocked and amazed me when I first spotted it doing this, when I first tried to record this episode. Underground road. If we look at building road above ground, it's quite cheap. It's seven and a half grand, roughly, for, for a tile. Da well, actually, three and a half grand. Underground, we're talking hundreds of thousands. <laughs> and the other curious thing here is, is it actually costs less the more you build. Uh, I'm sure there's some logic to that. It may be to, doing, to do with the amount of foundations they need to lay to put the road underground. I don't know, but it is, to say the least, a bit odd. Uh, we don't need to, I'll just build. No, I'll go above that, I shall. Uh, we'll, we'll do that. That's not equal, is it? I want to make it kind of, that looks about equal, doesn't it? Let's build that and see how well we do. Okay, uh, they're still building. We also need to demolish these bits of wall because we want the road to go along there as well. 
and we're finished. We'll need more road, basically, to go along there. Okay. What I want to do here, I think, is actually just plan this out so I know where the road is. So that's where the road is. Now, the trick here when doing underground roads... Oh, I can't see that, can I? <laughs> I need to, to put that planning marker on the ground floor, not on the underground. Silly Billy. Page up, drop that there. Okay. Yeah, the thing here that I fail to understand when I try to do it first off is that when you're building underground roads, you need these sort of ramps to go up and down the level to be going in the right orientation uh, for, for for where they need to, 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 to end up. Now, if I, where are roads here? Uh, they were somewhere. Were they objects? Structures? Uh, road ramp up and down. Okay, so here we're going to take the ramp down to from this ground level down to the uh, the underground car park. So let's pick that up. Click it. There you go. And we've got the arrows there. So we're coming in from the north and going down south. Yeah, that should work okay. All right. And likewise, we're going to want a ramp up, uh, ramp up down here which takes vehicles. Again, you can just about make out the arrows. They'll enter from the top and exit at the bottom. Take them back up to the ground level. Okay. Uh, I also don't need this planning either to be, to be truthful anymore, so let's clear that out. Let's clear that. Okay. And we don't need these one-way path signals either. Largely because we're going to need to put a, a gate in here for the remote bus to pick our passengers up from. And besides which, passengers know whether they're arriving or departing. So they know if they want to pick their baggage up and leave the airport, they have to come down this way. They don't really need these arrows here to, to, to force them. OK, right. That's more or less there. So what we're doing is we're putting our remote gates in. And we'll finish off the rest of this, this business at the bottom here. But I want to put the gate in so we've got a target for all the work we're doing. So if we go into objects, uh, remote gate large. And we're going to fit two in here. Now I had planned to put this a bit further over this way. But uh, I realised when I tried that out, if I put it here, because this building here is so close to it, I can't actually build the taxiway. <laughs> there is a defined gap here. Uh, when you're building objects, they have to be, I think it's something like 10 squares away from a taxiway. Uh, otherwise, you just can't build it. Uh, and that's what happened here. This building here, this corner, was less than 10 spaces away from where that taxiway needed to go so we're putting our taxiways here right up against sorry we're putting our stands right up against the, the taxiway there if you see what i mean so we'll have one there and we'll, we'll put our first yeah we'll put our first one here i think there you go and we want some taxiway we'll put that in yes yeah, so if I, yeah you see there if i try and build it there Sufficiently clear of nearby obstructions, blocked by a nearby fence or wall. So as you can see, that sort of white square overlaps the corner of that building. I could demolish that, but I want I'm, I didn't want to waste time or money doing that at the moment while it still serves a purpose. Okay, right. Now, where are we going to put our gate? We're going to need a gate for the buses that come along. Uh, and this is going to be under ops, I think, is it? Uh, have I got that right or wrong? I've got it wrong. Is it under structures? Remote bus pickup. There you go. Right. So we have two pedestrian walkways and a parking space for the bus. So the road will need to come along on the right hand side of that, as you can see it there. Uh, is it OK there? I think that will be OK. Okay. No, I can't move any further. That's uh, yeah. It's either, <laughs> either going to be. No, it doesn't make sense. This is the only place it's, it can go now to, because of the way I've set it up so far. So that needs to go there. And we need some road. 
our buses, our fuel tankers and, bear, and uh, luggage, baggage carts rather, all use the road as well. Uh, so we need this. Uh, most of the vehicles don't actually need road to travel on. They will travel on, on, on the taxiway, but that is a lot slower than travelling on roads. And we need our buses to get our passengers up to up to the um, up to the remote gate, uh, remote stand as quickly as possible. So uh, if we build that in there, is this going the wrong way around? Actually, I have a fi um, I have a feeling it might be. No, this no. I think that will work. I think that will work. Uh, so we need to run this road all the way up here to the gate for the bus to travel quickly along. Uh, so we're going to take, oh, we've got road already. Okay, we'll tip you up, up there. And you can go across the end of the stands, which is fine. Uh, what about, what is that? No, it's not done it. Ah. Let's click that again. Click it again, there you go. Click it again, there you are. That's pointing in the right direction. Up there. And we will take it up here, I think, and then it can go along. The arrows aren't terribly important. Uh, the vehicles will travel in whichever direction they want, they need to travel in. To, uh, to get to their destination. Okay, and I think this needs to go. Although it's nice to place the arrows in the, <laughs> in, in the orientation when you build the road. So put that along there, I think. And that's where the buses will park up while they're waiting to disembark and embark their passengers. Okay, so. Uh, we need to be able to get vehicles in and out of the underground depot, so we need some more road here. Uh, we will do that. Actually, if we run it along here, I think, yeah. And then straight down into that. And this can go along this way. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. Now, actually, if we if we just put that straight up, can we put it straight up there? It's no, it's it's good. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. Because what I think I've seen before is when you have uh, roads sort of laid in opposite directions, they leave a gap, which I think is purely a visual effect, but. Uh, well, we'll see shortly. We're going to need, obviously, some doors so people can get out of the corridor, onto the gate, onto the bus. Uh, let's just search for door. That's the simplest thing to do. You can either run your remote bus stand with two doors or one door. You can have one door and it just lets anybody in or out. Or if we put two doors in, one on each of these pathways, you can actually assign different doors for arrival and departure. Which is all rather nice. Okay, so actually we can get rid of our planning area up there as well. well it seems I know what I'm doing in this part of the map. Uh, we don't need that there either. Okay, right now this is complaining because it needs a gate agent desk, it needs a door on the terminal on the ground floor linked to a remote bus pickup and it requires a hangout with an apron bus. Okay, so we've still got stuff to do. Um, our remote gate has been built. And you can see here we've got uh, arrivals coming in and departures going out. That's the wrong way around for me in the way I've set my airport up. So let's switch those around. So the, depart the arriving passengers will come in through this door and then go straight down to baggage claim or straight across here to, uh, to wait for their connecting flight. And while I'm looking at that, I notice there's some floor missing. It just helps keep my passenger satisfaction up. Uh, is that all right? Yeah. In fact, let's move it down here a bit as well. Spend some money on flooring. Okay, how are we doing? Let's get the guys going faster. 
Actually, no, while they're doing that, I want to look at our flights for the moment. Uh, we have got some spare slots. While I'm looking at this, um, another little bit of research I did before this episode was to check the operating hours of Bristol Airport. Now, airports in the UK can run 24 hours a day, but they can be subject to local sort of considerations um, and requirements, regulations. I'm not sure how legal it is or whatever. But Bristol Airport does have a limited number of flights that it can run throughout a year. In fact, I think there's a different number for summer and a different number for winter. Um, so it has a, a, a number of flights that it can run during the hours of 11.30pm, 23.30 hours, and 6 in the morning, 6am. So what I'm going to do here, in a kind of respect of that rule, I'm not going to fill this early morning area here with lots of flights. So I'm going to keep it fairly minimal to sort of, again, in respect of and to reflect the way Bristol Airport actually works. Now, do we have more flights we can put in here on our existing small gates? I think we do. Oh, I put in a new airline, TUI, the Thomas Cook uh, Holiday Company airline. Um, they don't like me much, actually, at the moment. 20%. <laughs> Hopefully, if I can um, earn their trust by getting their flights off the ground quickly and efficiently, they will. Uh, that trust will go up and they'll offer me more flights. Uh, so, um, where can we put this? We could put it here. We could put it in the evening. Just thinking. Uh, if we move that one up right up to noon. Whiz Air a bit further. Logan Air. They all leave on in good time for the number of passengers they're carrying. So that's one hour fifty. Uh, that's a let's take that to one hour forty, shall we? Fortunately the, the shortest turnaround time you can put in is an hour and a half, even for these tiny planes with twenty or thirty whatever passengers. Okay, so we've got a seven three seven, hundred and forty passengers. Yeah, I think we can handle that. So we'll take one of these flights here from Tui. And we will slip you in there. And we will reduce you again from 100. Yeah, we'll put you as 140. And I don't know if we've got any more easy jet flights we can stick in here. We've got another PM flight we could put in. Or another AM flight. Um, we could possibly put another AM flight in. Let's, um, I'm tempted to go PM, actually, I think. So 319, 124 passengers. Yeah, we can handle that. So how long are you in 450? Oh, you can take it to 140. Uh, move you forward a little bit. Yeah, 140, and we'll take you and slip you in there. Bring you down. There you go. What's that? It's an hour and a half? Hour 40. That should be fine. If we move Ryanair forward a bit, that shouldn't. That should make sure there's no, not too much congestion in the terminal or on the taxiways and runways. Okay, those flights will start tomorrow. Uh, have my guys, the guys haven't finished building yet. Come on, chaps. Oh, actually, one th yeah, because one thing I noticed was, certainly if they're building up here, it's quite a long way for them to go. The delivery and storage area is here, um, and the only exit from the terminal building is down, is down here. So if we put a staff door up there, I think. Uh, a modern staff door. They might be able to get there quicker. Okay, we'll put you there when they finish building it. And, oh yeah, they, I had originally planned to put this third small gate down here, as you know, but I've because I've moved it up here, I'm going to have to rename these, um, these gates here. So this will actually be, no, I don't want the aircraft, I want the gate. 
uh, you'll be A1. You'll be A2. And A3 will go here, and this is the B gates up here. Right, uh, how are we doing? We can connect our remote bus pickup to that uh, gate there. That's cool. So we just need one gate agent and a, and a hang up with an apron bus. So uh, we're just about ready to do that, I think. So we put our gate agent desk in here. Gate agent desk. Uh, and we will put you in this way round. How much gap do I want to leave there? I think if we, yeah, we, if we put it there. Okay, yeah, because they'll then come round the, the gate. Yeah, that's fine. And we'll put Q in. And that will start there. Go there. There. Across there. And so on. Will that do? I think. Yeah, that will do fine, I think. Okay, let's get them finished building this. Oh, we need some floor in there as well, don't we? to finish this uh, oops where is it there it is to, on underneath these doors just to make it slightly more attractive ah there you are yes you see the, the roads are bumping up against each other oh that looks ugly doesn't it uh, I hope that works <laughs> okay so our gate agent desk is there uh, so we just need to assign this gate to that agent desk. There you go. Uh, oops. Uh, just need to close that. They're being so far apart. Uh, we want to put this agent desk assigned to this queue. Okay. Job done. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you noticed in the previous episode, these gate agent desks here were confronted by a huge mass of milling people waiting to board their aeroplanes because I'd simply forgotten to assign these queues to those desks. So they're a lot more orderly now. Uh, OK, I think that should work. So we just need the bus. Uh, we're late in the evening. Shall I buy a bus? Oh, go on then. Uh, Oh, I haven't put the, 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 the depot in yet. Don't. I was just waving it around, wasn't I? Just uh, showing where it w would go. So if we put you... This better work now. <laughs> yes, it lights up greenish. There you go. Right, so the guys just need to build that. Uh, some more planning I can get rid of. There you go. That looks nice and tidy. Uh, so how's the day actually been? Oh, again, another day of perfectly operated flights. Oh, and that looks ready. So we're going to assign one apron bus. Okay, now hopefully... Yes! That gate has no exclamation mark on. It is perfectly functional. Right, so we now have a gate B1, remote gate. We have one bus at the moment to run people there. We don't have a gate agent on our desk, so I suppose we ought to employ one. Uh, staff schedule to start with. Uh, where are you? You're that one there. We're in evening. We do want ones. We do want someone in the evening. We don't need anyone early in the morning. So we'll right click you. We do want you in daytime. Yeah, and we're not running any early flights yet either. So that's good. Uh, we need that one extra member of staff. Splendid. That's you done. And let's put some flights on there. And they are going to be gate B1. Um, who has large flights for us? EasyJet. Uh, I am.
possibly. But I want to keep EasyJet to their own stands and gates. Uh, so we won't put EasyJet on there. Wizz Air, uh, TUI, yeah. Um, yeah, all the rest are not appropriate for Bristol. They're made up airlines or airlines that don't fly to Bristol. So uh, it's going to be TUI then, isn't it? By the look of it, mostly. And we've only got three, two that we can use. <laughs> AM and PM. Oh, botherations. Right, uh, so can, I can't move you further along there. So let's move you over. Whoops, over. Move more quickly. Right, now I can see the morning slots, so we'll accept you. Oh, you're a, what flight are you? You're a 250 passenger maximum. Ooh. If any, if there are other existing flights or anything to go by, we won't hit that number to start with. We'll be well below that. So we will have this flight coming in thereabouts. And two hours. Take it down to one. F no, we'll leave it at two, <laughs> just in case. And we'll take a PM flight as well. And we will slip you in there. Okay, Wizz Air. Ah, your, this is more like it. Lots more flights. And you're running Airbuses. Um, the 321 Nero is the biggest one here. Uh, we could stick one of you in. Put you in there. Again, we will leave you as yeah two hours. Uh, actually, no one fifth, one fifty. I think you are a slightly smaller aircraft. Uh, the A afternoon flights. Uh, which I presume you're the CFS, the uh, the three to one. We'll we'll take that slightly different airplane just to sort of mix up our aircraft a little bit. And we'll put you in there. And we'll take you down to 150 and TUI, oh, sorry, Wizz Air did also have uh, a couple of evening flights. Uh, we'll take the, the big one. There we go. Splendid. Uh, we'll take you again down to 150. Right, so uh, that's an empty looking schedule, but we do, we, we are under resourced at the moment I think in terms of ticket desks and security so I don't want to over I don't want to overflow my my schedule here uh, too much uh, because I want to keep my perfect operations record if I can so is everything else working okay these roads must be okay otherwise this gate would have said no I can't can't find that bus and the bus must be able to get up and out and down and around as required okay so how did we do yesterday our perfect ops excellent we got that four grand 14 flights arrive and depart in perfect order our profit and loss yesterday okay we spent half a million yeah that that four grand will be really useful actually <laughs> Uh, okay, actually before the morning starts, we're going to have a lot more passengers here. Um, and I think we need to increase the offerings here. Um, what do we have for vending machines? So we don't want any other food outlets here really, not in the, this sort of check-in area. That should all go in the departure lounge. So what vending machines do we have? We have a hot food vending. Uh, you take up two spaces. Um, I don't really want you there by the start of the queue, do I? That you'll be better off over here somewhere, probably. Yeah, we'll put you there. And candy vending. Yeah, let's, let's put you in. Uh, there or there. Uh, if we put you there, I could probably do with some. Uh, some more dustbins. Okay, there we go. And we will put you there so you look better. And likewise over there. 
Okay. Right. I think we're all sorted. This is... I'm happy with this. Might do with some more seating down here, actually. Let's do that as well. Comfort, that is. And... Uh, yeah, that'll do. That's a gap. That's enough of a gap, I think. Round the other way. There you go. Splendid. Do we need any more vending down here? Possibly. We shall see. It's easy enough to add. And we may well need more uh, toilet space as well. We'll see how busy the airport gets as we roll into the day. Now let's speed up a bit. Our first passengers are arriving. As you can see, they immediately head for the vending machines. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and now, yeah, our sort of pre-flight check-in retail staff turn up. So how, how much money are these machines making? $35 already, 50 there, the coffee shop, 20 Yeah, these, these vending machines are, are nice and profitable. I like them a lot. Ah, oh, people are waiting to buy newspapers. That's really cool. Wow, they are buying a lot of newspapers. <laughs> Could we do with another automated ticket machine? Yeah, that's okay there, I think. Oh, but there are no staff here, so this is what I want to check. When the staff arrive, they should be arriving fairly shortly, fairly soon. Toilets, oh, we've got flight crew in there already, waiting to board their flights, to take people to their dream destinations. Excellent. Uh, how are the queues looking here for the tickets? Uh, okay, that... Oh, the other thing you need to bear in mind is how quickly do people get to the airport? At the moment, we have buses every 30 minutes, and I think each bus... I, I it does say there, 150 people, yeah, per bus. I stay there. And our capacity... Ooh... We might be a bit short in the morning. We shall see. But then running it every 20 minutes might get expensive. Aha! Our first two-way flight, and there's our bus coming down here to drop passengers off, and they're leaving. Connecting flights to collect their baggage. The bus turns around to wait for departing passengers. There's the flight crew boarding. And the passengers wait up nice and quietly in their queue. But there they go. Oh, it's odd the way the road turns around there. Okay, we'll see if we can work that out. So, it's only 34 people on this big plane, so he should be off in very good time indeed. Yep, yeah, everything's working fine. That's excellent! I'm really happy that I finally got this to work. As I said, I recorded it earlier and I got this whole underground parking thing completely screwed up and this remote gate would never work and I just spent vast amounts of money trying to fix it and couldn't. And it looks like our passengers may be happy with our service so far. Yes, our passenger satisfaction I think has gone up from 60, 70 something to over 80. That's impressive. Airline satisfaction is less good. That's gone down a little, I think, from about 37, 38. Um, not quite sure why. But uh, actually, you can you can sort of work that out here by going into each of the airlines and just checking these percentages here and what they're concerned about. So EasyJet, if I supply fuel, they'll be very happy. They like the passenger satisfaction of the airport. Wizz Air. It's to do with fees. And I was thinking actually of raising my fees. <laughs> oh, 2E don't like the fees at all. Right. Um, louder. Am I flying any louder? I think. Have I got any louder flights? Which it tells. Uh, no, it tells me. No, it doesn't. It tells me here. Number of flights. I haven't got any louder flights. Ah. But they fly. Oh, actually, though they fly. Oh, they, they're smallish planes. They're the three twenties. Uh, I could put them on the large gate, couldn't I? 
while I'm waiting. But no, it's a large gate. Should be used for large planes, I think. This is looking good. 10 o'clock in the morning. Everything's working fine. Do you know what? I think I'm going to call this a day. A little bit early, I know, but I'm so happy that I've got this to work. It really was. I mean, that it was a trial earlier to try and understand what was going on, but uh, I'm so happy you've been able to see me get it right. It doesn't always happen, but... <laughs> I kind of I kind of cheated. I made sure it did this one. So there you are. Thank you so much for joining me today for this episode of Sim Airport. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, it'd be great to hear from you. A like would be lovely. Just click on the old thumbs up button. But even better, if you've got any thoughts, suggestions, recommendations, criticisms even, anything to say at all, then please do drop a note in the comments box below. It'd be very much appreciated. And of course, if you've not already done so, you can subscribe to the channel. You can do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Sim Airport, and a kind of air, air, <laughs> aircraft-free airport. Oh, there's one. Thank you. I'll see you again soon. But until then, bye-bye for now. Thank you.